Hey everybody, welcome back to The Approved Cooking. So today I'm going to be baking some pretty weird pies. They're really interesting because they use some really different ingredients. Now these three pies originate from different eras, but they're all considered desperation pies, which basically means they were made by people when times were scarce, money was scarce, and you could basically just use what ingredients you would normally have in your home. First, I'm going to be making a water pie, which comes out of the Great Depression era. Next, I'm going to be making a vinegar pie, which originates from the southern United States. And then I'm going to be making a sugar pie, which originates out of Quebec, here in Canada. So without any further ado, let's get into it, and I'll show you how to make all three of these. I'm really interested to see how all of them turn out, because all of them sound really weird, like, by themselves, like water pie, a vinegar pie, and, you know, sugar pie sounds relatively normal. I mean, it sounds sweet, but I want to see how these turn out. So let's get into it. Okay, so to make pie, we're going to need to start off with making a pie pastry. Now this recipe is very similar to the one I used in the chicken pot pie episode. So get yourself a large mixing bowl and into it add five and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon of kosher salt, three heaping teaspoons of brown sugar to add a little bit of sweetness to the pastry, and then get your trusty whisk and whisk these all together making sure to break up the clumps of brown sugar. Then you'll want a whole one pound block of lard. I cut it up into cubes and left it out at room temperature for about half an hour to warm up. Pour that in with the flour. As you can see, it's stuck to my bowl a little bit. And then go get your handled pastry blender and then just start blending the lard in with the flour until it's all incorporated together. There we go, just like that. Next up, go get yourself a measuring cup. Get yourself one large egg and crack it into the measuring cup, making sure not to put any shells in with it. Then add in one tablespoon of white vinegar to make the pastry nice and flaky, and then give these a quick mix together, and then go get yourself some cold water. Now I have it in a separate measuring cup, you don't have to. Really all you do is pour in water into the egg and vinegar mixture until it hits three quarters of a cup in the measuring cup. Mix that together, and then go pour it in with your flour and lard. Get your handle pastry blender out again and keep mixing this together until it forms a shaggy dough like you can see it's done here for me. Once it has formed a shaggy dough, really just clean off your handle pastry blender and you're going to look for a consistency like that. See that's nice and shaggy. So flour yourself your work surface like I've done here. Go get your pie pastry and tip it out onto the floured work surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to knead this for three to five minutes basically kneading it back and forth, back and forth, until this pastry smooths out. As you can see, it's still pretty like loose and shaggy, but if you just knead it back and forth for, like, like I said, three to five minutes, it's going to start incorporating together. All that loose pieces will start sticking all together, and you'll get yourself a nice, smooth pie pastry. Once you've done that, press it out onto your work surface until, you know, it's about a half inch thick and then grab a knife or your bench scraper and cut these into four pieces that are relatively the same size. Now what I'll do from here is I'll roll these into a ball and cover them in plastic wrap because I'm going to use three of the four here but really these will keep in the fridge or the freezer for quite some time. So you wrap them up in plastic wrap and throw them in the fridge until you need them. Just like that. So now that I have the pie pastry made Let's start making these pies, and I'm going to start off with flouring the work surface yet again because we're going to roll out one of these pastry balls into a pie pastry. So I'll flatten it out with my hands a little bit here and then press it down on the floured work surface. Then I will sprinkle some flour on top of the pie pastry as well as liberally cover it over the rolling pin and then just roll this out until it's nice and thin. Now as for thinness, that's really up to you know you, like what your preference is on how thick or thin you want your pie crust. Basically, I just rolled it out until it was thin enough so that I could spread it out into a nine inch pie plate without any issues and it would go up the sides. So I just, that's all I did really. And then you get yourself a knife, you cut off the excess like I'm doing here so that you have a nice uniform edge all along it. 
Look at that. It's almost like I know what I'm doing when it comes to making pies. And speaking of pies, let's start off with a water pie. Into the uncooked pie crust, pour one and a half cups of room temperature water and then one cup of white granulated sugar. Now you can just pour this in. You don't really need to mix it. Then you're going to want to add in four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Now every recipe says you can just sprinkle the flour in, but as you can see it forms clumps on top of the water. So I'm just going to use my hands and just mix it in with the water to make sure it's incorporated. Then add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract and you're going to want to add in five tablespoons, yes five tablespoons of unsalted butter and cut them into little cubes like this and just gently place them in the water. From there, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and bake this for 15 minutes and then reduce the heat to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for another 30 to 45 minutes until it comes out golden brown like that. Now as you can see, the the top is still pretty, pretty loose and like jiggly, but what we're going to do is cool this in the fridge for three to four hours, which is going to help it harden up. And while it's cooling, let's make our next pie. We're going to go for vinegar pie this time. So flour your work surface again, get another one of those pie pastry balls out, and then roll it out with your rolling pin, pick it up with the rolling pin, and then drape it over your nine inch pie plate. Similar to before, press it down into the pie plate. Now this one has screwed up a little bit, so I'm using some of the excess pastry to patch the holes I made. And then, you know, just get your knife, cut off the excess around the edges so you have a nice uniform crust. Now, unlike the water pie, we have to blind bake this pie crust a little bit. So get yourself out a fork and poke a bunch of holes into the bottom of the pie crust. What we're going to do then is get out a big piece of parchment paper, like I have here, push it into the pie and then get out your favorite pie weights. Now I've been using rice. I've been using the same bag of rice for a few years to make my pies, but you can actually buy like actual pie weights if you want. Rice works just as fine. But anyways, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and blind bake the pie crust for about 15 minutes. Then take out your pie weights. Now as you can see, it started to get a little bit crispy, just a slight little bit of golden brown. But anyways, let's start making the fillings for the vinegar pie. So get yourself a mixing bowl and pour in one cup of white granulated sugar, a half teaspoon of kosher salt, and then get four large eggs, let them warm up the room temperature, and then mix them in with the sugar one at a time. So one egg in, whisk, put the second one in, give it another whisk, throw the third one in and whisk it again, and then wouldn't you know it, get the fourth one and whisk that in again. You want to make sure that they're all good and incorporated with the sugar. Then you're going to get yourself six tablespoons of unsalted butter, melt it and very slowly pour it in while whisking the egg and sugar. If the butter is still too hot, it could scramble your eggs and then that's going to suck. So pour it in slowly while whisking to avoid scrambling your eggs. So once those are all whisked in, add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract and then two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Get your whisk one last time, give these a good whisking together and then grab your pie crust that you've blind baked, go get your pie filling mixture, pour it in very carefully, make sure not to spill and you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake this for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes until it comes out golden brown looking like that. Look at that. <laughs> uh, this is one, this one's weird, man. Vinegar pie. But similar to the water pie, stick it in the fridge for a couple hours to cool down and harden up a little bit. And while we're doing that, let's move on to the third pie, sugar pie. So get yourself a mixing bowl and pour in two cups of brown sugar. And then you're supposed to add in one can of evaporated milk. Now I screwed this up and added in a can of sweetened and condensed milk. Now I am gonna push through and see how this turns out, but if you wanna make this accurately, use one can of evaporated milk. So pour that in and then get out your trusty whisk like always and whisk this all together until it's combined. Now evaporated milk is a little thinner than sweetened and condensed milk, so this was pretty hard to whisk together, let me tell you. And then you're going to need two large eggs warmed up to room temperature. Crack those in with the sugar and milk and whisk those together. Up next is get yourself a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Pour that in. Get your whisk out again. Whisk that all together. And then add in three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And get your spatula or a wooden spoon and mix those together once again. 
Once those are mixed together, go get yourself your third pie crust. Now I didn't film myself rolling this one out. I did it twice. I figured I didn't need to do it three times. Now you don't need to blind bake this one either. You just use a uncooked pie shell. So carefully pour the pie filling into the pie shell and then get yourself three or four tablespoons of unsalted butter, cut it up into small pieces and then just place it into the pie filling. From there, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake this for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour until it comes out golden brown and a nice crust is formed on the top. Now, weirdly enough, the butter didn't incorporate as much as I was expecting it to like it did with the other pies. But let's throw this into the fridge for two to three hours and see how it turns out after that. So it has been a couple of hours now, so let's go in and start taste testing these. Here's the water pie. Look at how that hardened up and just all incorporated together. Man, that's, that's bizarre. This is a, I'm thrown off by this. So let's cut a piece out here and get your offset spatula. Pull myself out a piece here. I'm gonna give you a close up shot here so you can see what the actual pie filling looks like. There you go. I, I swear, I'm kinda thrown off by this. This is, this is gonna be interesting, guys. Uh, I'm gonna see how this tastes. And speaking of which, let's go in for a taste test. And here we go. And after the first bite, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's interesting, that's for sure. I better go in for a second bite here, try it out. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, how can I describe this? It it, it kind of tastes like, like sugared Wheaties, like, you know, the cereal? It's sweet, but kind of bland at the same time. I don't hate it, but I don't know if it's like something I'd make again. That's That's an interesting tasting pie. So let's set that aside and let's go in for the vinegar pie. As you can see here, just cut myself off a piece, just similar, pull out the offset spatula to get myself a piece out here. And let me give you a close up shot again to show you the pie filling. It's a weird yellow color, this is interesting. Now what I read is they used apple cider vinegar to substitute citrus when it was out of season. But let me tell you, that is shockingly good. I'm thrown off at how good this one is. Like. It is tangy but sweet. Oh my god, I am blown away at how good this one is. That, the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just so thrown off that a vinegar pie could be so good, especially after the water pie one was just like, it was okay, it wasn't bad, but it was okay. But the vinegar pie one was awesome. So let's go in with this science experiment of a sugar pie. As you can see, the butter didn't quite fully incorporate in with the pie filling like the other ones did, and that's, I think, because I used sweetened and condensed milk instead of evaporated milk. But anyways, let's cut myself off a piece here. There's the inside shot of it. And going in for a taste test, and holy, that is, that is good. It is super sweet, don't get me wrong. That is really, really sweet, but that is surprisingly good. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna rate them, I'm gonna go with vinegar pie first, sugar pie second, water pie third. Man, these were these were weird pies. These were interesting. I, I really enjoyed making them. And you know what? You should give them a try at home. See if you like them yourself. These were they were pretty cool to make. So with that in mind, that's the end of the episode. I hope you like what you saw here today. If you did, why don't you drop me a comment, like the video, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching Itty Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.